Trappist-1 system got a lot of attention last year because of the three planets found within the habitable zone. And those are three out of total seven found. Now, the star Trappist-1 they are orbiting is an ultra-cool red dwarf star that has the diameter similar to that of Jupiter. But it is also 84 times more massive than Jupiter. And that's why it is a star. Also, the whole system is relatively close because it is 39 light years away. But that is still unreachable for now. So, the reason the Trappist system got the attention is because it has three planets within the habitable zone. Sounds like a bingo, but really the reality of that is not that satisfying. And that's because these planets are orbiting their star very closely. The farthest Trappist planet is 14 times closer to its star than the Earth is. And three planets that are in the habitable zone are there because the star is less luminous than ours is. So the habitable zone is a lot closer. But that also means that X-rays over time strip the planets out of any habitable atmosphere they had. And that means that all of the planets are covered with radiation. Meaning there is pretty much no life there, nor is it habitable for us. But still, this system is an amazing discovery. There are seven planets in it. This is a system with among the highest number of planets in a single system found. So then let's see what would it be like to stand on the surfaces of these planets. Let's start with Kepler E, which is a planet orbiting within the habitable zone. So standing on the planet would be possible as it is rocky. But you would notice that you would feel a bit lighter and moving around would be a bit easier. And that's because this planet has 77% the mass of the Earth. So it is less massive. And it has 91% the radius, so it is smaller. This together suggests that the planet's density is a lot lower than Earth's is. And thus there is lower gravity. But it is still a rocky planet. Looking into the distance, you would likely see the usual landscape with geologic activity. A hilly surface with a couple of active volcanoes. But looking up into the sky, you would likely not notice any kind of an atmosphere. And that's because it was likely stripped away by the X-rays. That's because Trappist-1 star emits as much X-ray as our much larger sun does. So this combined with the distance of the planets would mean that the planet would not have any significant atmosphere. So likely some stars would be visible in the sky, but also other planets in the system would appear. And you would be able to see their surfaces. And that's because of the fact that they all orbit the star so closely. It is comparable to Jupiter and its moons. Also, as you would stand, it would not seem as if time is passing, as it would always be day, and the Trappist star would appear fixated into the sky. And that's because all of the planets are very likely tidally locked, meaning they don't rotate because of their orbit to distance. So there would be no day and night cycle, leaving one side of the planet in complete darkness. But there would still be a year, and if you stood for 146 hours or 6 days on the planet, then you would successfully complete a whole year onto the planet, meaning a year is six days on Kepler E. Now, as for other planets, standing on them would be very similar. On all of the planets, you would be a bit lighter, as they all have weaker gravities than the Earth has, but some of them are larger in radius. Also, the planets would be rocky with similar features. Exceptions are that planets closer to the star would be a lot more hot. They would be like Venus and the farthest planets would be a lot more colder, like Mars. But in general, all of the planets would not appear to host any life forms, as they are full of radiation. This would mean that if we were to really go there and stand there, we likely would die of radiation poisoning. So that is what we can conclude based on all of the evidence. That is what it would be like to stand on them. But just because they are not habitable, does not mean we should not look into the system more. It's a relatively close star system to ours, and we can still learn from it.